In this DVD, some Alpa staff are seen showing the wrong way to do some things with food. These people are only acting and it does not mean there are any problems with the way Alpa staff work with food. It is recommended that trainers show this DVD one chapter at a time as there is a lot to absorb. Also use the quiz to help people remember the information and use the educational materials provided. Many indigenous communities are offended by pictures of people who have since passed away. The following footage may contain such images. Please preview this DVD before showing. We all know how important it is to eat healthy food, but did you know it's just as important for our health to prepare food that's safe to eat? If your job involves handling food, whether it's in a takeaway shop, a supermarket, a general store, a childcare centre or a Meals on Wheels program, then it's even more important. If food isn't prepared properly, it can make you very sick. This is called food poisoning. Sometimes it causes stomach pains, vomiting and diarrhoea and even death. Food doesn't have to look or smell bad or even taste bad to make you sick. By taking proper care, food poisoning can nearly always be prevented. In this video, we'll talk about what food poisoning is, how to prevent it and what the food laws are. The food laws are explained in the Food Safety Standards Booklet available from the Health Department. More information can be obtained from your local environmental health officer or environmental health worker. What is food poisoning? Sometimes people get very sick from things that they eat or drink. People can have a very sore stomach and can start vomiting or have to go to the toilet all the time. People might also have headaches or a fever. In really bad cases, people might find it hard to see clearly or have trouble breathing and people can even die. That is why this video is so important. You or your family may have had food poisoning in the past and know how bad it can get. If you watch this video carefully, you will be able to make sure that no one who has food that you have handed to them or made gets sick. There are four main causes of food poisoning. These are chemical, chemicals such as sprays left on fruit and vegetables, natural, natural poisons like those found on green potatoes and some reef fish, toadstools or raw cycad nuts. Not for eating, these are things we find on our food that you are not meant to eat like hair, dead insects or bits of glass or plastic. Germs. Germs are the most common cause of food poisoning. Two different types of germs are bacteria and viruses. Doctors use the medical words bacteria and viruses to talk about germs. Old people, young people and those already sick and weak. 
get sick from germs more often than other people. Bacteria are tiny living creatures which live everywhere. On your skin and inside your body. On food, in the air and on the ground. Bacteria are so small that we cannot see them just with our eyes. To see bacteria we need to use a microscope. This is a machine that is like a very strong pair of glasses that makes small things look bigger. Like this magnifying glass makes things look bigger. A microscope uses lots of pieces of glass like this to see things that you cannot see with your eyes. For example, have a look at this ant. To our eyes, they look small. Under a magnifying glass, it looks a lot bigger. When we put it under a microscope, you can see its whole head and even its teeth like this. If you take a piece of hair from your head and put it under the microscope, you can see that it looks like a tree. This is because the microscope glasses make what you see look so much bigger. Look at the size of the human hair next to this very tiny bacteria here. Bacteria can grow very fast in the right places. Bacteria can double every 20 minutes. So after three hours, one bacteria can turn into this many. After five hours, it can turn into this many. This means that a food that is not treated properly can become very dangerous within a couple of hours. Food preparation. There are many types of germs that might cause food poisoning. One is called salmonella. Salmonella can be found in uncooked chicken or cooked chicken that still has red bits inside. Most food poisoning can be prevented by following five simple rules. These are clean hands, clean kitchen, proper food handling, proper cooking of food, and the proper storage of food. Let's take a closer look at each of these rules. Clean hands. Germs often get into your food from your hands. By washing your hands and fingernails well, you can stop germs from getting into food because they are killed by soap and water. When you wash your hands, you should always use warm water and soap and dry them well with paper towels. You should always wash your hands before touching food, after going to the toilet, or any other times your hands may have been touching germs. The importance of washing your hands before preparing every food, you, should, you must always wash your hands before touching or making any food at the, anywhere. And the importance of that is because every time you go away to touch something, you don't know what you're touching. And it's very important that you do come back and wash your hands. Another place bacteria can be found is on kitchen benches and equipment. So it's important to clean these properly by Scraping and rinsing to remove all surface food. Washing everything in hot soapy water. Rinsing in hot water. And allowing what you have washed to dry in the air. If you use cloth or tea towels to dry dishes, they must be clean, dry and used only once and then washed. 
After we've cleaned the kitchen surface, we need to sanitize them. Sanitizing means wiping over with a special liquid that kills germs. Sanitizing with chemicals is different to cleaning. Cleaning gets rid of the food and dirt and sanitizing makes it hard for germs to grow again on that surface. Dishes also need to be soaked in a mixture of hot water and sanitizer. You can also sanitize dishes in a dishwasher on a hot cycle. Pests like flies, rats and cockroaches are a big problem in the kitchen because they can spread germs. Flies, cockroaches, rats and mice poison food by their urine and droppings and by crawling on places with germs on their feet. They need to be kept out by using fly screens and fixing gaps in walls and under doors. Don't feed them by leaving dirty dishes out on the benches. Like cockroaches or rats, dead rats or cockroaches, they especially come out at night, make sure all their food is kept in safe place, like cupboards or fridge. So when the cockroaches come at night, they look for food, food scraps around the table area. Sometimes they bring bad disease to the people. Other animals such as dogs and cats can also carry bacteria and should be kept out of the kitchen. When you pick up a piece of food that is for someone to eat, you should use gloves or tongs. This stops any germs on your hand getting onto the food and making people sick. When you touch money, take off your gloves. Money can have lots of germs on it that can make people sick. These germs can go onto your hands and then into other food. So never touch money and then touch food because the germs on the money can get to the food from your hands. Sometimes if two people are working in the store, one person can handle the food and the other person can handle the money. So only wear gloves when you're touching food and take them off when touching money. You can also spread bad bacteria if you cough, wipe your nose, wipe your face, or breathe on food. You should, you should uh, never touch food or make food if you've got diarrhea, vomiting, because because that will you're going to spread that to the food and if the other person eats they're taking the germs that you've spread to the food it's important to always wear clean clothes or an apron food should be kept covered in the refrigerator raw meat should always be kept apart from cooked food or food that is eaten raw like fruit and vegetables. Fruit and vegetables should always be washed well in running water before eating or cooking. To make sure germs are killed it's important to cook all food well. We need to take extra care when cooking mints Burgers, sausages and all seafood. Burgers and mints should be cooked all the way through with no pink meat showing.
chicken should be cooked so that when you cut open the cooked chicken, the juices coming out run clear and not pink and bloody. If you heat up cooked food again, make sure the food is steaming hot, kept at 60 degrees Celsius or more. Food should only be reheated once. Do not keep heating up the same food again and again. This is to reduce the number of germs on food and to prevent food poisoning. The important things to remember too, if you, if you have cold foods that you keep it cold. And if you got hot foods that you keep it really hot because if you just keep it warm, the bacteria is more likely to grow because they like bacteria like to live on warm places, warm dark spots. <laughs> it's very important to keep hot foods hot and cold foods cold. Hot foods should be kept at 60 degrees Celsius or more in the metal takeaway trays that stay warm called a bain marie or on the stove. When you keep food in the bain marie, it should be heated up first. Cold food should be kept at 5 degrees Celsius or less in the fridge. When you finish cooking and want to keep the food for later, put the warm food into small containers before putting it in the fridge. This helps to cool the food quickly and stops germs from growing. When you unfreeze frozen food, it should be done slowly in the fridge or quickly in the microwave oven, not just left on the bench. If you work in a place that handles or sells food, there are laws that you need to know about so that the food you sell is safe. The law says that people that sell food must tell the government. This helps the government to give you information to teach you how to produce and sell safe food. You can contact them at your state or local health department. If you work with food, you must know about the right ways of handling it. This means that you and your workers must take the time to learn about how to stop food poisoning. You must also make sure that you have the right skills for the job. Kitchens, doors and any equipment must be kept clean. New kitchens need to meet certain standards and laws and older kitchens need to be fixed to meet the law's standards. As a store worker, you have responsibilities under the law. You must tell your boss if you think food has been contaminated or made dirty by something that should not be in it. For example, you need to tell the boss if you find holes in boxes of food that mice or maybe dogs have been eating or if there are flies on the food or there are hairs in it. Even things like cockroaches, anything that's not supposed to be in it, you need to tell the boss. You need to let your boss know if you are sick or if you have any skin sores on your hands. Uh, if if you think you got or if you have sores on your hands, you should always cover them, wear gloves, or otherwise uh, just don't touch, don't go touching the food. Because there's, you know that there's germs in the sores, the cuts that you have. And if you're going to be making food, then cover your wear gloves or something if you're preparing a meal. 
You can't smoke in the kitchen. And do not eat in the kitchen where you work. The most important thing you need to do is to wash and dry your hands well and often. This is the best way to stop food poisoning. If you're a manager or an owner of a store that handles or sells food, you have extra rules and responsibilities under the law. You need to teach your staff how to handle food safely. When your staff are sick, they should not handle food. All food in your store should be kept okay to eat. This means throwing out food that has gone bad or has been returned by a customer. Kitchens need to meet certain hygiene standards. There are laws to say how clean your kitchen has to be. If you have a good clean store and equipment, it is much easier to stop food poisoning from happening. This means throwing out any utensils or equipment that have been broken, is cracked or is chipped, and keeping all knives and forks and surfaces clean and sanitised. Under the law, food businesses must have enough shelves and space for their equipment to be guarded against pests. There should be enough hot and cold water for cleaning. A wash basin needs to be provided in the kitchen for workers and must be used for washing hands only. Rubbish bins need to be put in the kitchen and emptied often. If you use a stove or other equipment to cook with, you'll need an exhaust fan to stop grease from covering and getting on the walls. Remember though, it's not healthy to eat too much fatty foods. Keeping food at the right temperature is very important when transporting food. Cold food should be kept in eskies with ice and on longer trips may need proper refrigerated transport. Transport companies must make sure that the food arrives on your community at the right temperature. If you're not happy with the way your food is delivered, speak to your transport company or your environmental health officer or the environmental health worker. Um, we have um, on occasions have damaged stock of food that come in, you know, with, they put like vegetables in the freezer instead of the cool room. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes out here, it's put on the shelf and it's all watery in a couple of days. So the damage there, so we don't get access to fruit because the packaging is all wrong and the delivery. If you are transporting food in your community, it's your responsibility to make sure that the food is transported at the right temperature. It's clean and packed well. Your environmental health officer or environmental health workers can give you more information on the best ways to set up stores and takeaways safely. As you can see, there's a lot you need to know if you run a food business or work in one. Remember all the things we've talked about in this video, like clean hands, clean kitchen, proper cooking, proper food handling and proper storage of food. Each government has a health department to help you learn the skills and understand the rules. And there are lots of brochures available too. But at the end of the day, we all need to work together to prevent food poisoning before it starts.